All right, you guys have been asking me for You guys have been asking me to, well, not to something. You've been like, where is the Red Dead Redemption 2 build? That's right here. We're gonna, we're gonna work on it today. Damn, that was louder than I thought it was that gonna was be. so loud. <laughs> NZXT's BLD is the simplest way to get a gaming PC customized the way you want it. Choose the games you want to play, set a budget, and let BLD take care of the rest. The all-new starter, streaming, and creator PCs take the guesswork out of finding a PC that needs your budget and gaming needs, and with a 48-hour turnaround backed by NZXT's two-year all-in-one warranty and same-day shipping available with Blitz Mode, you can start enjoying your new PC right away. To see what NZXT BLD can do for you, click the sponsor link in the description below. Okay, so I've got to set some reasonable goals. If you guys didn't see part one, there's only been one part to this video, I think, right? I showed you guys the burning technique for burning wood, and this was actually a crate that a laptop came to us in, an Origin PC laptop, and of course I was like, this isn't an Origin PC, so I burned it, but you can still see, but that's okay, we're gonna be cutting this anyway. I'm never gonna get through this build if I don't set some goals, because this one's gonna require a bit more modification that I'm not from that familiar with versus like working with metal and the metal cases and stuff. So what I think I'm gonna set as a goal today is to get the openings handled. Obviously we need to be able to get to the computer. My idea is that I want this wood piece here to be like broken, like, like it exploded outward. So you can see inside the system. I may or may not do an acrylic window. I may just leave it open. I might just get a grill sort of like this to see in there. I haven't decided yet but I can't decide what I'm gonna do until I have an opening. We also are gonna need an opening in the front. It's so wobbly without like any support. I think I need to use those L brackets, but that's okay, we'll figure that out in a minute. Um, I need an opening in the front, obviously for intake fans. I need an opening in the top, obviously for exhaust fans. And then I've gotta get the rear opened so that you can <laughs> access the rear IO. Fortunately, I don't really need to do a grill in the back. If I just have this kind of a broken out opening too, like the side, then you can access it. I won't have to do a fan mount because I can mount the fan there. I don't know how this is gonna turn out. And this is one of the reasons why I kind of stopped working on this build because I went, you know, I might have bit off a little more than I can chew here. Why is anything I do, do anything? This is gonna be one of those times when along the path of building this, people are like, wow, he's an idiot. He doesn't know what he's doing. And then just like the Destiny 2 build, they're gonna be like, wow, that turned out really good. Don't judge it until it's done, please. That's all I ask because I don't know what I'm doing along the way. I'm kind of figuring it out as I go, which is what makes a lot of these types of modifications fun. That's better. Remember the idea, like I said, in the first part of this video, if you haven't seen it, is I wanted this to look like it's been sitting in like the Arizona desert, all dried out and stuff, and the wood kind of turns like a, like not this gray. This is the, the same planks we use on the studio wall over there, the set wall. That's too gray for what I want, but more of a brown, but an old dried out look like this. This is gonna turn out great. Or it's gonna turn out terrible. The thing is, if I screw this up, I can buy another flat piece and do it again. Whoa, that was a big one. Uh, it landed in the kindling. <laughs> it was all into it. I'm trying to let it burn a little bit when it burns because it looks more real. Okay, we'll leave it on the concrete for it to cool off right now. Did it look like it blew up? So this actually turned out better than I thought it was going to. Like, you guys aren't the only ones when you see me do this, go, oh my God, this is gonna be awful. I'm thinking that myself the entire time too. And when I first started breaking it, I was like, actually, I was concerned when I first made the cuts. I'm like, uh oh, did I go too close to the frame? Am I gonna have enough room? But I think this actually turned out really, really well. I actually have it upside down. So if I go ahead and just kind of mock this back up, you can kind of see now how that's gonna line up. Now, I was originally gonna do an AIO on this. But I'm thinking now that this might be the perfect opportunity to do like a, a steampunk, all copper and brass and just industrial looking, like literally go to Home Depot and get all quarter MPT thread um, fittings from there and then just copper tubing that's bent and stuff. 
And then they have compression fittings on those too, so you can compress it in there and then you don't have to do the solder around it. But I kind of feel like trying that out and seeing how that turns out. But now we got to do the rear opening, the front and the top. And I'm a little concerned because the more material I cut away on this, the less structurally sound it's going to be. That's why I've got these guys. I always keep these on hand for when I need them for something. And as you can see, I can literally, but I don't think I have enough of them. No, I don't. I need another package. But I can L bracket all four top and bottom like this. And then even do like painted and rust effect on that, which will only just give it that much more of a, a, a unique look. I was originally planning on doing a hinge for that door to open. There's no point now. You can literally reach in it if I don't do like a grill. And I think if I did a grill behind that blast opening, I feel like it would look kind of weird. Yeah. You still have to imagine this aged and rusted and stuff, but I feel like I'd rather just have it open. I hope this can cut it. <laughs> but this is meant for sheet metal and this isn't exactly sheet metal. Oh God, this is not gonna work. So you know what I'm gonna have to do? Cause I don't have an angle grinder here, which would have made short work of this. Oh, and by the way, the metal that you see here, this is the effect I'm going for in all the metal. This is natural. <laughs> this, is, this is what happens when I left it in the backyard. I was like, I could Dremel, near, 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 cut all those. You know how many wheels I'd go through? Yeah. So I would need a vise in my angle grinder, but my angle grinder's at the house. Whatever. Where's my Sherpie? Where's my Sherpie? This is a green one, that'll work. You want a Sherpie? That's perfect. Okay, that didn't work. I'm gonna wait till I have the angle grinder. <laughs> the height of this versus where the power supply is. I guess I could always flip the power supply over. That way the plug is higher because I'm worried about the plug interfering with that. So that's like the area I've got to cover there. Well, snorkel gear. <sighs> this is what quarantine does to me. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta open this up a little bit more. And then we have to do the power supply one. Ah. <laughs> Ooh, look at the way the cracks showed up. Mm -hmm. The black in the back of the case, I should leave it black, huh? Because that really blends into the blackness here. Mm -hmm. So, yay! This was Phil's idea to leave this kind of a jagged piece on here. It's pretty strong, actually. And I think that turned out pretty good. He's all, this is just an L. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I lost interest in this build. As, ha as what, it happens all the time. I start something and I'm like, I don't really like it. But seeing this start to come together now, Yep. I also have the power buttons that were, that came with the test bench that I'm, I now can wire up into the dynamite. So I feel like the back one of the dynamites will be a, that'll be the power button. What if I wired a, a yellow or an orange LED to the end of the, the fuse? So when it turns on, that glows. That would be the power, that would be the power LED? Power light. Now you have to imagine the insides being the rusted look with potentially brass tubing and stuff. Kind of a, Kind of building upon that, that whiskey keg PC that people keep tweeting me and showing me pictures of because people know I like bourbon and they knew I was doing this. Like, check out this, this keg case. That thing is a work of art. That's art. This is just, let's just mess it up. It's easy to mess things up. That looks really good. But I think this might turn out. I, I might, I might like this at the end of the day. <laughs> Smells like the mountains. Dude, just that one with two screws in it is already making this like so much more rigid. All right, all the openings are done. I can't do the grill today. I already showed you guys I can't cut it. 
I need you guys to sound off in the comments below. What's gonna be the best technique for me to cut that really thick metal grate? I'm thinking about literally just angle grinding it down those little seams where they come together. Just if there's a better way that doesn't include me going out and having to buy a big bandsaw because one, I can't go out and buy anything anywhere right now. And two, that won't kill me or cut off a limb or an appendage, I need all of them. This turned out really well. I was able to kind of refine the process as we went. This was the first one I did. You guys saw I did it with the technique of breaking it. And the problem with that was I feel like it splintered and broke the wood apart too much. Remember, these are, these are layers of particle board or uh, plywood, they're plywood. And so when I break it apart, it breaks the glue and then it fans open like that. Now burning it got rid of all the little splinters and stuff. It just burned those off, which is perfect. That's why I'm not getting like debris falling off of it because we burned all that off. But as we went on, you can see I sort of refined the process as we did this one. And I was able to splinter it out like we wanted on the side that shows, but not break it off. So we get this nice kind of an explodey look. This is actually really, it's got a lot of fuel still, burned up fuel on it from the map gas. A lot of that will rub off. It's all over my fingers now. That's actually pretty sturdy right there. Phil's idea was to have this look shardy. But you can see I refined the process a little bit by doing V cuts with my jigsaw, letting that do the work with the exception, you know, without having to break the wood. And then you can see we refined it and made them smaller, more fine gashes up here because this is where the 360 rad would go and the 240 rad or AIO and fans, however, you know, you would do this. I'm still thinking I, this deserves a steampunk type copper brassy sort of a loop inside. I really think so. That's as far as we're gonna get today in terms of the modifications to the case. But what I'm gonna do next, kinda wanna mock this up and see how it's gonna look. So let's go ahead and mock it up and then we'll come back and show you what, how it turned out. I didn't give myself that much room for wire management back there, but that's okay because if I get some custom made cables that are like black and copper, then we could let the cables be part of the theme and just be kind of explodey in there. I was concerned that this was gonna be just a stupid build and some of you might still feel that way. I don't know, man. I'm starting to see it. Imagine the reservoir right here, making, mixing my own custom, kind of a custom copper colored clear glycol coolant. The other thing you have to imagine too is the fans on this. You ever seen the candle setting with NZXT's hue, which is like the yellow and kind of a flickery color. So it would look like maybe it's on fire in here. Yeah, so let's get the motherboard and stuff in there. Are we ready? What? <laughs> Boop. Ryzen always takes a while to turn on, remember? Especially for the first one. Okay, it's at 02, just sitting there. All right, this was not supposed to be another troubleshooting video. I'm just swapping out this CPU to a 36, 100X, or 3600X, if maybe our 3950X has been bad from the start. So we're gonna do, like I said, 3900X, a CPU that we have used in a build guide. We know it works. It's even got a little bit of thermal paste still around the edges. Could you imagine if this was like a fully rigid build and then you had to change like a motherboard? 3960X is in there, or 3600X. 30, Here we go, 3295X. 33, 61, 39, 27, 98, 64, 9C, A2, D6, and then it would stick on O2 on the other CPU. D7, O2, and it stopped on O2. Two bad impact boards back to back? This whole build hinges on ITX. And if we're gonna be doing an ITX Ryzen, then we need this board. This build will commence. I don't care what it takes. <sighs> Asus, come on. This is two of them back to back. I just took this. If I seem frustrated, it's because I am. Worst case scenario, if I've gotta go Intel on this build, I will. I don't know if there's any other ITX X570 boards out there that can handle a 3950X. I'll look. But this is, uh, yeah, it's almost as disappointing as my modding skills, I guess, but whatever. This build will continue, guys. Thanks for watching. Test your hardware before you build. You can see why. This is literally what happened to us months ago, again, because now we have holes. All right. I'm mad, I'm just mad now.